Good day Grade 11s. Welcome to your second last lesson, Exponents and Certs for Grade 11. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at rationalizing the denominator. Let's see what that means. It says, if the denominator of a fraction is a third, it is sometimes easier if we convert the denominator to a rational number. Oh my word, there are so many scary words in that statement. Guys, if we have a fraction and there is a square root in the bottom, for example in the next example, it is much easier to solve this if we get rid of the square root. So that's what we mean by rationalizing the denominator. We're getting rid of the square root number by making it a rational number. Okay, and we only do this if there's a square or cube or whatever, a root, a third in the denominator because it makes it much easier to solve this. So what we're going to be doing is looking at how to simplify this expression. So if we look at it, we've got 3x plus 3 over the square root of x. Now what could we possibly do to get this to be get rid of the third. Obviously what we could do is we could multiply this by itself. If we multiply this by itself then it would become root x times root x which is just x. But the problem with doing that obviously is what you do to the bottom you have to do to the top otherwise you don't have the same expression again. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top by 3x plus 3 by root x and then all we're going to do is we're going to multiply it out. So this becomes 3x times root x plus 3 root x. Okay, so that becomes 3x times root x plus 3 root x. Now for you guys at this point in the question you might think well that's not much easier and much nicer and I agree. We are, we were just showing you how we would do it. Okay now let's look at an example where it actually makes sense. Let's look at this. We've got 1 minus 49 and then we've got square root y plus 7 oh, and, and there's a problem with this. Do you see this plus 7? If I just multiply this by a square root y over square root y like we did last time. Do you agree that we'll end up with, if we just look at the denominator, the square root y times square root y goes away. We agree. That just becomes y. Plus we've got 7 square root y. So we still have a third of the denominator. So that's not going to work. So let's just erase that because that's not going to work. And let's go back to our ink color. So there's a trick and the trick is this. If you have a third plus a number, what we can do is we can multiply this with a number that's going to make this into a perfect square. In other words, we're going to multiply the whole of this by the difference of it. So we're going to go y minus 7. But what we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. So this becomes root y minus 7. Now the reason we do this is because we know that if we've got a plus b multiplied with a minus b, we end up with a squared minus b squared. And you'll see therefore that we do not have a third anymore because the square root times the square root is just that number. So let us have a look at this. So first of all let's do the denominator. Root y times root y just becomes y and if we look at this pattern, a plus times a minus is a minus and 7 squared is 49 and this over here is, if we don't multiply it out, becomes 1 minus 49 all multiplied with root y minus 7 and do you see that because that there is the same as this, we can actually cancel the whole of that out and we get root y minus 7 as our simple solution. So that's much prettier than that scary thing over there. So do you see that this is a little trick? So if you have a third, specifically a square root, plus a number or minus a number, if we multiply it by the opposite, if we multiply it by its difference of two squares opposite, in other words, if this is a plus, this becomes a minus, then we get rid of the middle term and we end up with beautiful rational numbers at the bottom and possibly thirds left at the top. Let's look at another example. Okay, so we've got root 3 plus root 7 all over root 2. So what are we going to do? To get rid of the denominator, being a third, we're going to rationalize it by multiplying both the top and the bottom by root 2. So then if we do that, 
we've got root 2 times root 2 is just 2 but then we've got to do these nice and slowly so that becomes root 2 times root 3 plus root 2 times root 7 which becomes root 6 plus root 14 all over 2 and uh, there is nothing more we can do with it that's it remember very carefully and this is why we put this example in you cannot add these you cannot add them they don't come out to the same answer if you add them because they're two different terms right let's look at another example over here we've got 2 root t minus 4 over root t again we do not like the root at the bottom so we're going to times both the top and the bottom by root t. So what do we get? We end up with the denominator is nice and easy. It's root t times root t is just t. But now we need to multiply this with both the numbers at the top. So we end up with 2 times root t times root t minus 4 times root t. Okay, that's all at the top. And then if we multiply that out, we get 2 root t times root t is just t minus 4 root t all over t and if we really wanted to impress the math teacher we could see that there's a common factor we have 2 we can go 2 t minus 2 root t all over t and that's it so this is another example of rationalizing the denominator okay let's look at another example ah so now we've got 1 minus root p to the minus 1. So what is that minus 1? That means that this whole thing has to be on the denominator of a fraction. So we would write 1 over 1 minus root p. That's what that means. That is the same thing. Now what did we say? We said that if we've got two terms at the bottom what we can do is get rid of this root p by making it to be a perfect square and we multiply it with 1 plus root p oh, and remember that what you do to the bottom you have to do the top so it becomes 1 plus root p and then what do we end up with 1 times that is just 1 plus root p all over 1 times 1 is 1 minus times the plus is minus and p squared is I mean root p times root p is p squared and that is it that's there's nothing else we can do with that okay right let's look at this example we've got root a divided by root b all to the power of minus one let's write that out slightly differently do you agree that becomes root a divided right by root b all to the power of minus one the minus means, if it's all the minus, it means the a goes to the bottom and the b goes to the top. Okay, so therefore we've got root b over root a. And now there are two ways we can do this. Okay, to get rid of the, the, the third at the bottom, there's easily we can either apply the rule that says that this is the same as just b of a. Okay, that's one way to do that. Or what we can do is what we've been doing all along is we're going to go root b over root a and to get rid of the third at the bottom what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the top and the denominator by the same third so that we end up with root a times root b all over square root of a times square root of a is just a and remember we can just bring those two together so it becomes a b all over A. So either of those answers would be correct, it depends on what you're aiming for with your thirds and you're trying to solve your solution. Right, grade 11s, that is it when it comes to rationalizing the denominator. So remember, rationalizing the denominator is just a really scary way of saying that we want to get rid of the third at the bottom. So either we multiply it by the same thing or we multiply it with something that's going to make it a perfect square. Thank you, grade 11s. Have a lovely day.